So if you're not from Stoughton, don't come until Stoughton. Um, as my dad said, uh, this is the folk instrument of Norway. It's called Harding Fela, or Harding Hardanger Fiddle. Uh, the earliest known example was credited back to Hardanger in Norway, it's a region of Norway. And the earliest known example to exist, they have dated back to about 1651, and it's back in Norway, it's in the museum. Uh, the Hardanger Fiddle looks like a regular violin or fiddle, a violin or fiddle, depending on what you call it and how you play it. Um, but the Hardanger Fiddle differs from a regular violin in several ways. It has extra strings. Um, they figured they've added, about every hundred years, they added another string. So mine has eight, and my father's has nine. And there are four strings on top, and the most common tuning is F sharp, B, E, B. So if any of you are in uh, orchestra or strings or you understand musical instruments, that is not how you uh, normally tune a regular violin. It's completely different. It's also about the size of a three-quarter size violin. Uh, the reaches are a lot shorter, which means all your steps when you take and uh, uh, work the notes on the fingerboard, they're all close together. And you also play with what your uh, orchestra teacher would call uh, pancake wrist. You don't use the vibretto. There's nothing like that that does not happen in our uh, music. Um, so, my, a little bit about my fiddle. Um, it's got, uh, if you're all familiar with rose mauling, this has rosing on it. It's uh, uh, a rose mall like design, but without the color. And it's on the front and the back. It's all, uh, my favorite board is all mother of pearl inlay. This was built by a fiddle maker for his son uh, from uh, uh, Kate Sund in Norway, which is in southern Norway. And it was made by a fiddle maker for his son who immigrated to America before, well before the turn of the last century. It found its way into northern Wisconsin on the estate of what we found out was called the Woodpecker Ranch outside of Osseo somewhere. It was auctioned off to a uh, antique shop and we happened to go up there for, uh, my sister and I were going to go to Norwegian summer camp for two weeks from the Sons of Norway. And we went to get, of course, some pie at Nord uh, Norskenuk. And uh, they had this there, and I don't think they know what they had. We got it for about four or five hundred dollars. It was in pieces, and we had it put back together by a very talented fiddle maker and uh, instrument maker in Black Earth called Ron Post. If you've ever been to the shoebox, his place is right across the way. I don't think he makes anything anymore. He's quite elderly, and uh, but he uh, was one of only a few fiddle makers in the United States that made that makes Hardarmer fills. I don't know how many there are now. But my father's is a uh, recreation of one that was in our family that was handed down. There's a gentleman in Norway that has it. He agreed that he would not give it to us, but I will give you pictures of it. So uh, we had that one made. And it was my great great grandfather. Great great grandfather. So, so anyway, so we started playing. Uh, we, we went to Norway in 1988 on a family trip to discover our family roots back to the family farm. We went and found a little town called Bu in Telmark. And they had what they called the Lundskap like or the national contest. And it looked like a pretty darn good time. The fiddle, fiddlers were playing, people were dancing, people were having a few <laughs> beverages, as, uh, as the Norwegians do. And uh, I said, Dad, wouldn't it be cool to learn how to play one? So a few years later, we got our hands on a couple of these. We've been playing since about 1991, 92. So. Uh, we'll play a, a song for you. Uh, it's a waltz. It's, uh, Fiddle group that came through uh, from Olesens, which is over on the coast north of Bergen. Um, Olesens Spadelman's Lock, a fiddler's group. They play it, and this one is called Mesilia Rostas.
So when you, you probably thinking, what do you play four strings? What the heck do you do with the other four or five? The other five or four are drum strings, and they're played kind of in a, or they're, they're played indirectly through uh, harmonic resonance and vibration. Uh, the other thing the hardener fiddle has is the, the holes, the commonly known as F holes on a, a fiddle. They're much wider, and the, the, the violin is much thicker than a regular uh, fiddle or violin, which allows more sound to be produced and more sound to go out of it. And, and as a result, the other strings, they like vibrate underneath in resonance and in sympathetic harmony with the top one. So it kind of gives that drone string feeling like if you're listening to bagpipes or something similar that has a drone sound behind it. So um, I think I think that's... Uh, one of the things they say about the Hardhugger fiddle is that a regular violin use about a half of a cat for the cat gut on the violin. On a Harbunger fiddle, they got to use the whole cat. <laughs> and one of the things that I uh, just experienced here is that this moist weather kind of will, the string will stretch. So we're in the middle of it, all of a sudden I caught that my string was off. And you know, it, it, it's not hard to tune. If you got a half an hour, you can get it tuned up real easy. But these live in a case for most of the year, so then we bring them out. I know we should probably play them. So, I mean, he plays, plays havoc within an instrument that's 100 years old made of wood. So, anyways, uh, we'll be back with you in a few minutes for the start of the Gunad Style Show. Enjoy and thank you for coming.
afternoon, everyone. My name is Margaret Liston, and joining me is my daughter, Sarah, to my right. We're pleased to be your co-host for the 48th Annual Sutton and Boonan Style Show. Today, we'll give you a basic overview of the traditional costumes, or boonads, from a variety of regions in Norway. We're going to begin our costume journey today around the country's capital, Oslo, and end our journey in northern Norway near the Arctic Circle. Norway is divided into five major regions, Nord Norge, and Norga, Vestlanda, Sorlanda, Oslanda. So in other words, north, south, east, and west, and middle. These regions are further broken down into counties. Uh, two years ago, Norway decreased their counties by merging some counties. So we do have a map over here of the present counties, just to confuse you even more. So we'll, we'll have them grouped by region and by county. <coughs> So what is a bunad? A bunad is a traditional rural clothes as well as modern 20th century folk costumes. The designs are typically elaborate with embroidery, sh scarves, shawls, and handmade silver or gold jewelry known as solia. There are bunads for both men and women. Uh, the Bunan movement has, a, has its roots in the 19th century national romanticism, which re was revived in interest of traditional folk garments. In Norway, it is common to wear Bunads at various celebrations such as folk dances, weddings, baptisms, confirmations, and especially Setnamai celebrations. It is also accepted as proper gala attire. The Bunad tradition here in Stoughton was brought to life by Marian Kibo. You will hear us mention her several times throughout today's show as she organized classes and taught the art of Bunad making here in Stoughton starting in the early 1970s. So let's start by welcoming our 2022 Sedemai royalty to the stage. Introducing you to our prince and princess. 
this, first I'm going to talk about Prince Noah. So I'll have Noah take a step forward. You want to come center here, Noah, so everyone can see how great you look. So ladies and gentlemen, this is Noah Snowen. He is the son of Jim and Angie. He is 10 years old and in the fourth grade at Sand Hill Elementary. He is a safe school ambassador and has a black belt in karate. You guys, our community is safe with this prince. Okay. So uh, Noah's vest was made by Shannon Suthas, and his solia is from his grandmother. So I'll have you take a step down, Noah, and just wait right down here for your princess. Okay. All right, I'm going to have Cora. This is Princess Cora. So Cora Schweiger is, um, she is the daughter of Sean and Emily and sister to Eden. She is nine years old and she's in the third grade at Fox Prairie Elementary. She loves to write and illustrate stories and she loves to bake. Do you make any krumkaka? Okay, we'll, we'll get you the recipe, all right. So uh, Cora is wearing a children's festrock from Norway. Now one of the things to really note about festrocks is they aren't traditional garments. They're little, they're garments that are really modeled on the folk um, traditions in Norway in general. So um, this has very elaborate embroidery on the belt and purse. So when she walks by, make sure you notice that. So thank you, Princess Cora. Thank you, Prince Noah. Great job. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Walk down the center so they can take a look at your garments again. There you go, and then you can scoot back around. Thank you. So next we're going to talk about the Stoughton Bunad. In the early 1970s, Marion Kibo designed this Bunad for Stoughton, wanting it to be a mix of elements from many areas of Norway that represented the Stoughton community. She pulled inspiration from several Bunads. The large Rosemald style flower on the breastplate um, is inspired by the Rosemond from the Trondheim area. And it was designed by Ethel Paulheim, our famous Rose Muller here in Stoughton, who's no longer with us. The apron design is based on a very old apron from Numidal. It has strong vertical stripes on the front along with some uh, small flowers. There's also rose embroidery on the collar and the cuffs of the blouse. In 1997, the first three of these bunats were, were completed. The first one was worn by Queen Salbury, who was our queen for that year. So Helen and Ken Carver are the models we have today. They have the green version. It also comes in a red version. Kent was the first man to wear the men's Stoughton Bunats, and they bought them for gifts for each other. Helen uh, also has a short jacket that goes with her Bunat. Um, it's not quite the day for jackets, so um, <laughs> maybe next year you'll see that along with her hat. So as my mother noted, this is Kent is wearing the first Ben Stoughton Bunat ever made. So you're looking at history here. So thank you so much, you guys. You want to come down and do a twirl and let them take a look at your garments. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. All right. So I am going to move to the Sørlande region of Norway. And we're going into the county of Augur. So I'm going to welcome Ellie here to the stage. So this is the West Auger Bunad. Not everyone's a fan of this Bunad, I guess, but we are. It's got wrong turn, so <laughs> This Bunad was designed in the first part of the 20th century and was copied after an antique woman's costume between 1830 and 1870. It's a two-piece dress, and the bodice can come in several different colors. The skirt can be either gathered or tucked. Now, one unusual feature of this bunad is how the bodice and the skirt are joined together. So they're actually fastened to the bodice by two braided tabs in the front. So I'll have um, Ellie kind of show you the secret here. So you can see there's two braided tabs that actually fix the garment together. It's pretty neat. Um, the, and then in addition, it's fastened to the bodice by two braids in the front, and then actually there's a button in the center on the back. But that's a special secret that, a, that us ladies have, right? Um, the shawl is embroidered, so I'm going to have Ellie turn again. It's gorgeous. The and the, is beautiful. And the apron and purse also have the same vibrant color, so you really see that as well. So this is Ellie. As I mentioned, Ellie Wells. She joins us from Wausau. 
So she is wearing her late grandmother's bunad. So her grandma actually received this as a gift from a family relative. The bunad is very special to the family and has been passed down to both Ellie and her mother. So several years ago, Ellie and her family traveled to Norway to celebrate Setnamai with their family and Christiansson, Norway, and Ellie's mother actually wore this bunad at that celebration. So thank you so much for sharing it with us, Ellie. You look great. Have you step down and take a twirl? Also, as she walks by, you'll notice, as I said, it is gathered. The whole skirt is small, um, gathers all the way around. It's very different. So. Skirts, accordion pleats. Yep, accordion pleats. So, thank you. All right, we are moving to Uslana. Now, out of Surlana into Uslana. So, let's welcome Wes Telemark to the stage here. So, a lively flowing rhythm pervades all of the arts of Telemark region. This district is known for its exquisite needlework and handicrafts, and the folk art of Telemark is considered to be the most artistic of all. It is reflected in the bunads, as we see, so very elaborate. The West Telemark bunad is a redesign of a folk costume from the first part of the 19th century. So first, I'm going to have Kathleen step forward here. So Kathleen, this is Kathleen Ameline. So the Ameline family farm is in Trungen, Telemark, and Kathleen is excited to wear this bunad to showcase her family's history. She purchased it from a broker on eBay. The broker actually purchased this bunad for her own daughter and kept it for many years before selling it to Kathleen. So one thing to note is Kathleen is carrying a copy of a 1900 Grotemar. So this was used for Römergrit. Now, for those of you that don't know what Römergrit is, it's a very rich porridge that you can try at the Sons of Norway today if you would like. Oh, they're sold out, I've just heard, guys. I'm sorry. You'll have to see if you can maybe pawn it off someone on the street. Us Norwegians like our Römergrit. So she's also actually demonstrating band weaving at the Opera House this weekend if you would like to visit with her some more and see more of her um, special garment. So thanks a lot, Kathleen. Our next model is Tom Fendrick, and he also has a guest with him. So I'm going to talk about both. So Tom, who is, what's the name of your guest with you? So this is Isabella Grace. So Isabella Grace is actually wearing a children's Valdris costume, um, which we'll talk about more about the Valdris region. But one thing to note is the beautiful, again, elaborate um, stitching and embroidery that is really reflective of the flowers and artwork from that region. In addition, she's wearing a bonnet. I'll have you turn, Isabella Grace. Can you turn for me? The entire belt is embroidered and is the bonnet. Usually all of these garments had traditional headwear that actually mark whether a woman is married or unmarried. Um, this garment is actually from Little Norway, so when it was closed, um, they were able to purchase it. So now I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Tom. Yes? Here, come on over and use the mic. Is he notified that the grandfather can't wear the hat, can't wear the bonnet? And I'm like, why can't you? She's like, that but it smells. So she's doing this for all of you. Thanks for taking one for the team, Isabella. It looks great, even though it's a little stinky. It's okay. We appreciate it. All right. So Tom. Tom is wearing a black vest with a stand-up collar. This design was worn in the first half of the 1880s. It has vivid embroidery in shades of red, yellow, and orange, which are inspired by the Telemark Rose Walling motifs. These motifs repeat six times on each placket. The lapels are rust and also embroidered, and the collar is piped in rust. The vest can also come in dark blue in addition to the black. So Tom is wearing knee breeches and showing off his great calves today, um, and hand-woven garters. Um, there is also a white wool jacket piped with rust and green that can be worn with this, but not in today's weather, so you can't see that. So Tom's costume was made in the mid-1990s by Dee Shamel, who made the vest with room for expansion, but Tom has still not used that expansion. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. So Lori also made the knickers and the shirt for him. Thank you, Tom and Isabella. David Listug. So this good-looking guy is my father, and this is my brother. <laughs> so 
So David had this Buna was made in 1988 in the Ingeborg Amaklasen Husfried in Bu Itelmark. He is wearing the version with trousers and a vest. He also has a black jacket that goes with this Buna that he is not sporting today. Um, this actually comes from the region where his father was born. So next to him is James. Um, so David and James were our fiddlers today as well. <laughs> so James is my brother. Um, my mom made this bunad for him. So the vest is double-breasted with pockets both at the chest and the waist. And he is also wearing knickers with telemark pewter buttons and Norwegian pattern wool socks accented by colorful garters. He also wears a blue scarf from the Husfliden in Norway. So we have one other guest and that is Emily Glashevsky. So Emily is my brother's girlfriend and he's assisting with my two daughters. So she's coming out with a different region than she normally would, but she is actually wearing the Dovra Bunad from the Gudbrandsdalen Valley. So this costume was designed around 1930 after inspiration from an old hat found on a farm in that region. It comes in blue and black and we see the black version worn here by Emily. So the main motif is um, embroidery on the garment and large repeated distinctive floral motifs in pink on the bodice. This is very uh, unique and you actually only see this on garments from the Goodbrun Stalin Valley. Um, they also are seeing those same motifs on the bodice, skirt, hat, and purse. So this is a one-piece jumper-style bunad that's reminiscent of the traditional dress shapes from the Goodbrun Stalin Valley. So Emily is currently a Spanish teacher for a high school uh, for Kettle Moraine Charter High School in Wales, Wisconsin. And this is her first set in my, so she's very excited to be here. So in addition, we have two little ladies. So uh, Carolina and Ingrid Barnes. So this is Carolina and this is Ingrid. Um, they are escorted by um, Emily, Uncle James, and Papa. So uh, Carolina is four and Ingrid is two and they are both wearing traditional Telemark inspired children's fest rocks. So this is Ingrid's first time modeling. Um, and this is actually, this is how she models. She practiced this. And Carolina's third time modeling, she first modeled when she was 18 months. So when Carolina grows up, she wants to be a cheerleader or herself. And Ingrid would like to drive a garbage truck. So we are very thrilled to have them. Thank you, you guys. Thanks, Ingrid. Great moves. Look at your your bunats. Thank you, you guys. Sarah is the proud mother, and I'm the proud grandmother. <laughs> Never a dull moment in my house. <laughs> now we're going to talk about uh, belt of stock. More beautiful grand, more beautiful children today. So. <laughs> this bunat is known as Sash Costume of East Telmer. Which is very obvious. It's remained largely unchanged from the beginning of the 19th century. This bunad has a short bodice when compared to others in this region. The trend can come in several colors, such as gold, purple, rust, pink, red, and everything I find on the internet is some new color I've never seen before. It's the most popular bunad in Norway with the young people right now. Um, they make the sash in wild, crazy colors. Um, I like what Margie has. So, um, the belt is carved woven, much wider than the East Telemark that you're going to see soon. It's typically six feet long, which means it's wrapped around Margie two and a half times. And um, when we talk about Megan's, we'll have both of them twirl. But we have to talk about Megan. So actually, Margie and Megan, can I have you come down here and actually twirl for us? So, um, a little bit. We have Megan Schrader on my side, wearing her mom's moon out of her So, as my mom said, so actually um, the skirt is wide and closely gathered with a stiffened hem. So as they twirled, some old skirts have measured between 13 and 26 feet in width. And if your next question is, are they heavy? Yes. <laughs> they weigh between 10 and 15 pounds. So, so Margie is telling me, yes, the 15 pounds is accurate. So, so I'll let you talk about the runes, Mom. Go ahead. And then um, Margie.
Audrey has two of her grandchildren. Yeah, these are Margie's great nieces. This is um, Freya and Ruby. So you want to come down here by your great aunt Margie? Your granddaughter's about <laughs> So they are wearing children's vest rocks that um, are kind of mimicking a two-piece garment. Um, they look great in the red and the green. Ladies, can you twirl and show us your embroidery on the back? Oh, they look great. Let's give them a round of applause. But we're moving into the county of Inlonet. 
So this dress is considered the formal bunad from Gudbrand Stalin. So as I mentioned, you saw Emily earlier also wearing a different garment from this re region, the Dovra bunad. Uh, the most stunning feature of this bunad is that it uses metallic thread and a satin stitch throughout the embroidery. Um, this is something you won't see featured on any other bunad. So this bunad can come in both blue and black and can be worn either with or without a uh, apron. So first, I'm going to have Kathy Howard step forward. So this is Kathy, and she received her bunad, which was made in Norway in 2019. It actually arrived here just one day before a bunad style show, and we were hoping that there'd be enough time to tailor it, but it didn't work out, so we're thrilled to have her here today. So my mother made her blouse, which is also Good Bronze Stalin style, um, to match the garment. So uh, next, we're gonna have Jean and Marty step forward. So this couple was our 2017 Setnamai royalty, and they had such a good time modeling that we didn't have to twist their arms much to get them to come back and model for us again. So uh, Jean ordered both her and Marty's bunats from the Husfeet Fleet in Lillehammer, Norway. Um, and this is where her relatives live, near where they're from. So Jean wears the blue version with pink pansies, and her white blouse has tatted edging. So Marty is wearing a crimson wool vest and jacket, which is a men's festrock garment. So just a reminder, it's not a traditional accepted bunad, but seen as garments that are modeled on traditional folk traditions in the area. Um, and it has beautiful all wool pants, which feel great today, right? Yep, nothing like wool. Um, uh, and they were actually made in the same Husfeld in Norway where Jean's bunad came from. So thank you, you guys. Our last model is uh, Lissa Instafjord. So Lissa's mother made her dress in 1984. After it was made, she met a man who had ancestors from Gudbrand Stalin. So luck brought them together. So if you're single, you're looking for a good Norwegian man, maybe get yourself a bunad, he'll see it and he'll just be drawn to you, right? So later she was married. So that's the funny story about this, so thanks, Lisa. So let's give them a big round of applause, you guys. Take a good look at that metallic thread when they walk down. Really beautiful stuff. Thank you so much. So now we're moving to Valdres. Valdres is part of the Goodburn Stalin Valley. There's two designs for this bunad, the new Valdres and the old Valdres. Hulda Garber in Norway designed this costume and it was first worn in 1914. Uh, it was inspired by an old headdress and shawls found in the region. The embroidery on the dress was very intricate in a floral design and features flowers in bright colors. The bunai can be made in either black or blue. Ellen is wearing the new ball dress. Our old baldress model had an accident at the last minute, so we'll see her next year. Ellen is wearing the new ball dress. She purchased it online and was quick to snatch it up. The blouse she is wearing she was hard on her embroidery, and she actually wore this blouse when she was in the store with Norwegian dancers. Thank you, Ellen. Beautiful. Also, when she walks down, she's wearing a beautiful silk scarf that also you see scarves and shawls worn with the bunad. And, so. and some boots, which are very acceptable, not just bunad shoes in Norway. So. She's styling. All right. I'm going to have my mother step out from behind the podium here and have a stand, stand next to Sherry. So um, we are still in Uslana and we are going to talk about the Gummel Grafer Bunad. So this Bunad's embroidery design is based on an old skirt from the 1700s found on the Grafer farm in Lom. So this design was first finished in the 1930s and was one of the most popular Bunads worn in Norway at that time. In 1952, additional research on the garment was done and the embroidered bodice was then changed to a brocade top, um, which is now seen on, on newer versions. So what you see is the actual skirt, but oftentimes a red brocade top or a gold or a blue, all of those are seen. So I'm gonna have our first model, Sherry, step forward here. So Sherry, this is Sherry Like, and she inherited this bunad from her grandmother, Adeline Tygen, 
who made this bunad in Marion's class in the early 1970s. So Adeline, Adeline's family was from this area, and the jewelry has also been passed down to her from her grandmother. So beautiful. Thank you so much, Sherry. Sherry, how many years have you modeled in the show? She lost count. I actually think, I mean, I, every year, is, I, when I was a little girl, I modeled, and I always was envious of her bunad, so I'm pretty sure she, she was then there. So thank you so much, Sherry. So um, this is my mother, Mark. So her bunad was purchased from a broker on eBay. And um, one of the things to note is that all of the thread is um, plant dyed. So, and she is wearing a metal belt, which denotes her status as a married woman. So, I guess if she takes it off, my dad's in trouble, so. <laughs> All right, thank you, Mom. All right, next we have uh, the Gaustal Bunad. So we are still in Uslana and still in the county of Inlana. So Gaustal, the Gaustal bunad has a checkered skirt and a design that originally came from Vaga. This bunad used to be made completely of upholstery fabric because of the wish to represent every commune in the area and partly because they only had this cloth available at the site at the time of its creation. After the 1920s, the bodice was made from a solid color or damask fabric. The skirt has a plaid design with the embroidery within the boxes pattern of the plaid. So this bunad can be made in many variations, blue, rusty red, brown, or green. So mom, you want to tell us about our model, Bringa? Bringa's wearing this version along with her bonnet, which she loves. The bodice is of um, the red damask, and if you look closely at pattern on it is pomegranates. She purchased this kit in Lillehammer when visiting relatives, so she had a lot of help to pick it out. They brought her Solia as a gift before she left more Norway, and I was teasing her earlier. She's got her chest pretty full. <laughs> she's, 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 leaving for, she's leaving for us on Sunday, so she will be on Carl Johan's God to watch the parade, we hope. So Rose Schrader did the embroidery all at what square, and she left that for Bringa to finish so she could say that she had embroidered on it. So thank you, Bringa, and have a great trip. All right, I would like to welcome the best Uplan Bunads to the stage. So this Bunad is from Stone Sister City in Norway. So the committee that designed the Jövik Bunad was formed in 1937. So the embroidery on the hymen design was taken from a design from a sled pillow. The embroidery is an ecru and has a very interesting border with French knots. One of the special things about this Bunad is the bodice design. So I'm actually going to have Mary and Stephanie turn around. So um, you can see that there's a peplum on the bodice that is divided and it's gathered. So it's very unique and pretty. So when Mary and um, Stephanie walk down, be sure you take a look at that. So first I'm gonna have um, Mary step forward. So this is Mary Onsager. So um, Mary um, actually helped, uh, Mary and Kibo was key in helping with this pattern. So Rose Schrader did the embroidery and Ruth Dietzman put it together for Mary in 1997 and it still fits her like a dream. Yes, it does. All right, next we've got Stephanie. So Stephanie, I'll have you step forward. So Stephanie's family is from this area in Norway, and she bought the vest from a broker online and ordered the skirt kit from a Husfliden in Norway. So again, Rose Schrader embroidered the skirt, and my mother tailored the garment to fit her. So Stephanie actually used to work at Leaves Reisa downtown, the Norwegian Heritage Center. Um, she now lives in Lone Rock. Um, but she still loves Stoughton, and we're so blessed she came to share it with us. It's good to have you back, Stephanie. Thank you so much. So we're moving on to Hedmark. Um, we have three, three lovely models. So uh, the Hedmark Punad was designed in 1939. It was based on a watercolor painting of that area. The costume has been revised twice, first in 1955 and again in 1985. You just saw the later version come on the stage. In both versions, the shirt and the waistcoat were made in wool. The bodice could come in red, blue.
blue or yellow silk damask. The design of the bodice was copied from an old lace bodice from the area. The skirt is made of a lightweight wool with dark stripes along with small multicolored flowers in each of the panels. The vest has a peplum and the skirt features box pleats instead of knife pleats again. So one item that's very different. All the dresses you've seen before have had knife pleats. So Ruth Courtney is wearing the 1955 version right here with the red bodice. Ruth's grandmother is from this district. Ruth did most of the embroidery work in her heart on her class and she's a very accomplished heart on her heart on her stitcher. And Ruth Dietzman put this boon on together for her. So Cicel, is this your granddaughter? What is her name? Willow. Willow. So this is Willow. She's wearing a festract. She looks great. Um, she's also wearing, a, holding a Norwegian flag, which in Norway you can't go down the street and see a child in a costume without a flag. So this is very ekta norsk, I have to say. Oh. Willow is two, and a, two and a half. Look at her. First time modeling, you guys. She looks great. So a lot of individual handwork on these. 
her belt ornament, um, her belt ornament and purse clasp of gold complete the outfit. So it is just stunning. So when she walks by, be sure you look at that beading. That is an entire season of beading. Uh, next, I'm going to have our model Kristen Clausen step forward. This is Kristen's first time modeling. So she is actually wearing her mother's bunad, which was made by her grandmother who immigrated with her parents and younger siblings to Beloit in 1901. She was only 18 years old when she came here. So working in a boarding house, uh, she met her grandfather, a Danish blacksmith, just back from the San Francisco earthquake. In 1953, they went back to Norway, and while in Norway, her grandmother bought the beaded breastplate for the vest, beaded belt, Hargadunner lace for the apron, and the maiden's cap. She is also wearing her grandmother's solias, or her pins. With the help of a good friend, Carolyn Benferrato, right here, she made a new skirt and a new apron insert with the original hard on her lace. So you guys are looking at tradition wrapped in heritage here, which is really what these garments represent. So thank you so much for sharing it with us today. Kristen, you look amazing. Thanks, you guys. Deborah's Bunad was originally purchased in Norway as an anniversary gift to the original owner. 
The skirt is very finely pleated, and she has a black cape that is lined with green and black and a black satin hat. Um, so I'll have you show the inside of your cape, just because it's so pretty. Look at that. It's these details. They're hidden everywhere. Um, thank you, Deborah. Next, I will have Carol step forward. So this she has a white belt, too. Yes, she does have a white belt as well. Not yet. She just likes the bling, as I do. Okay, so Carol is wearing her late mother's Bunad Bev de Groots. Now, Bev had made this dress in Marion's class in 1978, and Bev said that she just wanted a piece of Norwegian culture for this French Canadian, and she chose this Bunad because it was so unique. So, Bev was a longtime model with us, so it feels like a little piece of home having you here modeling it for us. Thank you so much, Carol. Thanks, you guys. Take a look at the pleating on uh, Deborah's dress when she comes by. It's really intricate. Thanks a lot, ladies. Beautiful. So now um, we're going to talk about the area from Veslana, which is song and um, it waited a long time. So anyway, Sonne Buna was designed by Anna Knudsen in 1920. It was fired by an antique pastor from the last part of the 18th century. Uh, the ladies' punad is a one-piece jumper style. Uh, the brocade can come in a number of different colors. Uh, today we have black and red, but it also comes in green or a brownish color. Um, so they all can look a little bit different. Different communities choose different colors if you go to Norway as well. Uh, surrounding uh, the bottom of the skirt is an antique border, either in red or green. These have to be green. The design is called the snow on the mountain, the sun sits on the fjords. So if you look at it closely, you'll see what, we, what we're talking about there. The unwired women wear a black velvet belt with a metal buckle, and the married women will wear the married women belt. First um, model we have here is Jody Cohn. She's wearing a blue bodice. Jody's apron is patterned silk rather than embroidered or hand woven. Jody's apron is, uh, like I said, it's, it's Woven aprons can also be worn. Her blouse is made of white cotton or linen. I'm not sure in what it looks like. It's white top work. Uh, you can also use a blouse of black cross stitch. And you may also see over the white blouse, but yet under the dress, a green soft shirt. That's another indication of Mary Bird. So um, to the left, her furs her lovely husband Bob. Bob's wearing the traditional Sugna vest. It features the red double-breasted design and trimmed in black. It features those many silver buttons you have to polish down the front. It's wearing black nippers and handle and socks and garters. Tell me again what year you were a royalty. What does it say? What year we were a royalty? 2018 they were a royalty. Lots of royal blood in our midst today, you guys. And they also own uh, Culver's here in Stoughton. And I'm sure everyone has thought by eat sometime. <laughs> the next model is Sylvia Lewis in the red. She purchased it in a boot when I kept from Marion Kibo about 30 years ago. She worked on it on and off over the years, finished it about a dozen or so years ago, and she added the plaque belt in 2016. Thank you, Sylvia. She ordered it from a kit from Bergen, Norway in 2013. I did the sewing and tailored it to fit her. Sandra Fem Fleming did the crest stitch on the blouse. Um, so, uh, again, you saw them on the TV ads this weekend. Welcome everyone to Stoughton. Glad that they could take time to be with us today. Um, so, Randy's wearing the men's bonnet. His design is based on a costume uh, of the central and inner parts of song from the first half of the 19th century. They're not exact copies of old garments. The jacket he has has his origins in the fashion of the Renaissance of the 16th century, that flare you see, uh, while the vest and the knee bridges were more influenced by um, pure fashions. Uh, that's the thing with Norway. They borrowed a little bit here, a little bit there. They didn't always adopt the current style, but they adopted part of it. 
And again, this is a full wool jacket, so he looks great. <laughs> Thanks a lot, you guys. All right, we are now moving to uh, Sir Trondelag. So we are moving into the fourth of fifth regions in Norway, Mitt Norge. So we are in the county of Trondelag. In 1923, three teachers introduced the new ladies Trondergunad for the entire Trondelag district. It was the result of three years of research. As was often the case at the time, one of the objectives was to use Norwegian fabric. Previously, linen was cultivated in Norway, and this group wanted to revive old techniques for weaving, drill, and damask. Today, both the bodice and apron are sewn in damask. Since this costume was being designed for a large geographic area, some optional colors were also selected. So here we see blue, but you can also see this in rust or green. Um, it is a two-piece bunad, and the only embroidery in for this bunad is on the purse. So first we have Patrice. So Pat Patrice Rowe has the blue version of the woman's bunad, and it was purchased for her by her family who lives on the island of Hitra near Trondheim. Beautiful. And she is wearing sporting bright red stockings, which again, there's always little hidden secrets that us Norskis have with our garments. Our second model is Sarah Tupper, and Sarah's mother purchased this bunad for her from a member of Sons of Norway, from the member of Sons of Norway Lodge. Um, my mother tailored this to fit Sarah, and this is your first set in my McQuarrie, isn't it? First time after COVID wearing it, so she is thrilled to be here sharing with it. Awesome, the blue looks spectacular on you. Thank you so much, Sarah. She has a beautiful, she has a beautiful shawl. So we're now moving into the last and final region up in Norway, Nordnorga, in the country of Norland. Most of the source material for uh, the bunad, both the men and the women's, came from the city of Esven. The bunad has embroidery that we're talking about the dress here on the front of both and the back of the bodices, which resembles water lilies. It closes with um, one, two, or three clasps usually, and the clasps also have the water lily pattern. Uh, the purse is embroidered in the same floral pattern as seen on the bodice and the hem of the skirt. The apron's cotton is striped with a check pattern at the bottom to match the shawl. The shawl is finished in lawn fringe. It's worn folded over the shoulders and the corners fastened up in the front of the neckline. Um, so bonnet, bonnet's kind of fallen out of fashion, so you can now wear headbands. My last trip to Norway, I picked that up, so that's what you see now for it. And the hat is the headbands. Uh, First Mar Marcia Siebel is the first model to the far right. She made her Bunata Mary Kibos class and chose this because she liked the color green. After she completed it, she discovered, discovered a family was from Goodbrun Stalin and Talmar. Um, 
she's wearing it with knee bridges. Uh, you can also use suspenders with that. The best is in flower lay, uh, flowy, flowy, flowery brocade. Say that five times. Like fabric, which comes in mint. Here's the mint. I've seen it in the gold. Uh, comes with a white shirt. And then uh, you can also wear black stockings with it. She's wearing white stockings and knee bridges. Uh, the buttons for the vest are most commonly silver or uh, tan. And in total, she has a dozen silver buttons. Uh, I took it out of the bag yesterday. We must have done something right. I didn't have to polish them. So. So thank you very much. Uh, it was put together again another project during the pandemic. There you go. So thank, thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you, Stoughton Cable, for filming the show. Thank you to Pastor Layman and the church. Um, be sure to look around, take all your belongings with you, including any papers you have with you. Um, so they don't have to do anything up before the service tomorrow. First Lutheran has been kind enough to let us use this facility year after year after year, and we don't want to wear out our welcome. So um, to finish up this show, we're going to fiddle out the remaining models. So we'll have one great last promenade for all of the models to walk by, and our fiddlers are going to bring us out. So hit it.